So I've been doing a lot of these lessons on the four string, and I'd like to talk a bit about the five string bass now. So we can definitely get it done on four strings, and a lot of bass players have, and, and Jocko certainly proved that you can say a whole lot on the four string instrument. And I would recommend learning on four strings and then graduating to five strings because once you pick up this instrument, you'll, you'll think, like I have it tuned to a low B, but after playing the four strings, I would think I was playing the low E, and then I'd hit a low B, and it, was, it takes a bit of getting used to. But if you want that extra range, I definitely recommend playing a five string. This particular bass is tuned down to a low B. And the reason I opted to go lower is because with the four string, I ended up tuning the low E down to an E flat or a D in many instances. And I wanted to have the extra range on the bottom. So the lowest note is the low B, and I just love it. Love, love that low range there. It can be tuned using a high C and starting with the low E, then uh, going all the way up to the high C, which is great as well. This is a two octave neck. So I have lots of range available to me on this instrument. This is actually my signature bass that we developed with Yamaha. And if you see me, most of the time you will see me playing this instrument. I have also a six string bass in which the strings in the middle are the four strings of the bass, the, the E, A, D, and G, but the high string is tuned to a C and the low string is tuned to a B. So on the six string bass, we have B, E, A, D, G, and then a high C. And, and then we have, we have everything that we, we could ever want range-wise in an instrument. So from time to time, you will see me playing the six string bass, especially when I'm called to do more soloing sometimes chord melodies on the bass, and this offers me a lot of notes. And that's basically the five string, I love it.